Welcome back, gang. Today's lesson is the second in my series on pool cleaning systems. Today's lesson is going to be about in-floor or pop-up cleaning systems. So let's get going. Alrighty, before I take you through the how pop-up systems work, I want to tell you about this video and what I'm going to do, but I want to remind you first, please like and subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. So, this lesson is going to be broken down into a couple parts. First, I'm going to talk to you about how a typical in-floor or pop-up cleaning system works. And there's some variables, but I'm going to try to give you an overview of how they work. And then I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons. And then at the end of it, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my choice and my opinion of pop-up cleaning systems. So without further ado, we'll get going. Okay, so before I head back and show you a couple examples of how a pop-up system works, I wanna remind you that a pop-up system is different than a vacuum style cleaning system in the sense that, well, obviously it's a vacuum, but the vacuum usually works on the suction side of the pool system, whereas the pop-up system, which is what I'll call them, in-floor cleaning system, but I'm gonna call them pop-up systems, they work on the return side. So they require return flow of water back into the pool to drive the jets of the pop-up heads. And again, remember, the vacuum, the in stay-in-pool vacuums, they rely on the suction side to suck and vacuum. And uh, just wanna keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay, so this is an example of one of my clients who has a pop-up system that actually works quite well. Um, and again, I'm just using this as an example to show you the basics on how a pop-up system works. And I'll get into different uh, things uh, about these later. But suffice to say, this is just a good example. So this one has, as you can tell, a dedicated pump, this one right here, for the pop-up system itself. And this is the, this is the pump for the filter. So that actually is my recommendation if you do have a pop-up system uh, or if you do decide to put one in to get a dedicated pump for the pop-up system because that way you're, you'll guarantee enough pressure to your pop-ups where in, in the other cases of some of the other ones, if it's tied to the main pump, then you've got you know, if you've got a water feature, you've got other returns, or you've got, you know, a water sprayer, anything like that is going to have to share pressure. And it's kind of like if you have a house and you have, you know, the washing machine running and you have two people trying to take a shower, you're going to lose water pressure. So it's the same kind of thing. So this one, again, is my, is my recommendation. If you're going to have a pop-up system, you want to have a dedicated pump. So this one does. So here's how it works. This is the suction side of the pump and it sucks in this case it sucks from the skimmer and it also sucks from a separate leaf canister that has an open port in the side of the pool and i'm going to go over here and show it to you if you look right there you'll see an opening a white pipe not the port not the thing that's sticking out but the other thing okay it's right there right there, I'm hoping you can see it, okay? The aerator is above in the upper kind of left-hand side, and then there's a, a white opening, like a white pipe. That's the suction side also, and it goes to that. Inside that cover is a leaf catcher, and I'll show you that in a moment. And this pool is equipped with that for their pop-up system, and it actually is um, recommended, but different pools might have them or not, depending on your system, all right? So, back to the pump. The water is sucked in through the suction side of the motor pump. It comes up and through this pipe and back down. Now this pipe actually comes to this little doohickey right here. This right here is called the pop-up actuator. And I'm not gonna take it apart because it, it's uh, kind of a mess to put back together. But you notice all these pipes on the bottom. Now one of those pipes is actually this pipe here. It's gonna come back up, I think it's the center. It comes up through the center, so I don't know if I can see it, but right in the middle of there is the main pipe that this is right here. It goes down through the ground, comes up through the center, and that 
that drives water into this actuator. Now, inside this actuator, imagine it like an old-fashioned mechanical clock, right? Or a grandfather clock, where there's a bunch of gears inside of here, okay? So, there's a paddle wheel in here that when the water hits it, it starts to spin the paddle wheel, creating pressure. That paddle wheel turns all the cogs and gears in there, and down at the bottom, these pipes, each of these pipes is tied to a section of pop-ups. For instance, these three pop-ups on the steps of this pool are tied to one of those pipes, okay? So each pipe is tied to a section. And inside each, inside this actuator is a flap right here at the base. And as those gears turn, there's a little wedge that lifts the flap. And as it lifts the flap, the flow back to the pool goes through that particular pipe. And then it drives those pop-up heads. And then as the gears keep turning, that little wedge keeps turning, moves around, right? Catches the next one, lifts that, this one drops closed, and so on and so forth. And that's basically how it works, all right? One thing to keep in mind, that this only works when there's the, that pump is moving or working or running, right? And then the other thing to keep in mind is, every time those heads pop back down, as that little distribution center goes through its cycle, those heads are supposed to turn slightly as they pop back down. So what happens is they eventually do a 360 degree turn, excuse me, and that theoretically creates a full circle pattern and moves the water around. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to a system like this that has the separate dedicated pump motor for the pop-ups. If you want the filtration to happen, meaning filtering dirt, you gotta make sure that your, your filter pump is running as well at the same time your pop-up pump is running because the particles, what happens is, as the, filter, as, as the pump runs and the pop-ups blow the debris and the dirt up and suspend it in the water, okay? Scuba divers call that inner space, right? What happens is then those particles are sucked in through the, through the filter if the filter's running, and then the filter filters out the dirt, and then the debris hopefully is caught in the skimmer and the suction side of that leaf vacuum or leaf catcher as well. So that's the basic principle on how a pop-up system works, okay? And so uh, the other thing is some of the actuators, the, the return pipe is up here, is above it, and comes in through the top. Right? And I'll show you an example of that in one of my other clients' pools. Now again, this is one of those pools that the pop-up system actually works quite well. And you know what? I'm going to fire it up so you can see. Now I'm not going to turn the filter on, but I'm going to fire up the pop-up system. So there's the cleaning system. And I don't use this anymore because the filter, to run the filter, because the filter is on, it's a dual speed filter, and it has its own uh, control panel there. So the pump is running, water is going through here, all right? And a lot of times they have a run and pause. So if I pause it, that means wherever those gears are, it'll stop those things moving. Now I always want to keep it on run. So if you notice, right now, there's a great deal of water flow at that step, right? And down here at this end of the pool, all right? Now I'm gonna stand here long enough and hopefully you'll see that in a moment, those particular heads will drop back down. Can you see that head? I'm trying to see if I can see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, right there. So you notice this creates quite a bit of, of pressure. And again, this is one of the systems that actually works quite well. Now, remember this. This person is the original owner of this pool. And the company that put this pool in and the manufacturer of these pop-up heads are still in business and still operating in our state. So their lifetime warranty is in effect. Okay, so when you watch this, you watch that head, and as the pressure totally, there it goes, that head dropped back down. Now the pressure has switched, that valve in the, that actuator has opened up another port, and now it's the steps. And you notice there's a lot of pressure in this, and that's one of the reasons why this works so good. Now you also notice, as I open this up, you know, there's, there's suction in the skimmer. Remember I said, so this particular system, it shares suction with the skimmer, 
between the filter and the dedicated pump so it's split so they both can draw from, from this as well which creates a lot of good suction okay the other thing that it's sucking from is this remember I showed you that port right there I'm hoping you can see it that white pipe it goes to this and there's the lid of it if I open it here is the leaf catcher okay it's just a basket Okay. Now this particular one, if you notice, there's no suction happening and that's because this catcher is tied to the main pump of the filter. So it only creates suction when the filter itself is running. And again, why I say if you have a pop-up system and you have a dedicated pump for that pop-up system, then you want to make sure that when it runs, your filter system runs as well, so you can get the full value of the cleaning. So that is the general way a pop-up system works. I'm gonna show you another example, actually two more examples of the systems and just a little different configurations. All right, this is a second example of a pop-up system. And this is one of my clients, and he's actually very conscientious about this system. He is the original owner, of the pool and remember that he's the original owner of the pool so everything for him is under a lifetime warranty and the company that put the pool in and the pop-up system is still operating in business in this state so their warranty is still valid but if you notice there's smaller heads the diameter of the heads is a little smaller than my first example okay and you also notice there's a good example of the debris getting blown see that so it gets blown. What's interesting about this one, the debris always ends up pooling up in that corner and that area right there. But I want to take you to the actual system or the, the filter area so you can see the differences between the first example and this example. All right. So let's head over here. And here's the system. And the first thing right off the bat is you notice there is only one motor. So that means that this pop-up system shares the return flow with all the other ports and valves and things in the system. So this has a deck core, all right? There's the deck core. That's the chlorinator that sits in the deck, okay? And it allows water to flow through and erode the chlorine tablets so it gets chlorine in the pool. There's an aerator, which we'll talk about those another time. There is a heater, okay? And they don't run the heater all the time. It's on bypass right now. And there's also a spa. But this is the actuator, and I'll get to that in a moment. But again, when you have a system like this, that it shares the pressure with all the other valves, you have to make sure that you have enough pressure going to the pop-ups in order to get them to work properly and create enough pressure to actually do their job. So in the first example I showed you of my clients, the, the actuator, remember the actuator? The, the return pipe of, from the filter came up through the middle of the bottom, right? And then it went through that way. And I wanted to show you an example of this one because this one is an example of the return water coming through the top, goes in, turns the paddle wheel, turns the gears, and it lifts the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the valves underneath it and does the same thing. This one also has a spa. So this, again, this valve is letting all the cleaning happen. If I turn it this way and close this off, it bypasses the cleaning and it lets the water go to the spa. And the reason they do that is because when they have water going to the heater, uh, water heating the spa, they don't want that water then going into the pool because then that hot water is not going into the spa to, to, to warm it up. It's going into the pool and being wasted. So again, when you share the return pressure, you've got all these different things that you have to deal with. Now, the other thing you'll notice is there's no leaf vac, right? Like the first example, they have one in the ground. And the third example I'm going to show you, they actually have one that's in the, the line of the filter or the pipe, okay? But again, there is no leaf back. So that means that leaves and debris that are sucked in either end up here or they end up in the skimmer, okay? So again, this is an example of a, another pop-up system 
with the return flow to the actuator going through the top of the, the actuator. And then also this doesn't have a leaf, a separate leaf vac, and it shares the pressure with the rest of the pool. I want you to notice the openings of that floor drain cover. You see how teeny they are? Those are regulation now for safety because the older covers had bigger holes so debris could get through like leaves. If you notice, there's a piece of, uh, that's a palm frond stuck in there. And again, the bigger openings allowed the leaves to actually go in there and then be sucked into the system with a pop-up system. But because of the new OSHA regulations for child safety, because children were actually going down there, getting their fingers stuck in there and couldn't get out and they would end up drowning. So it's very dangerous. So rightly so OSHA said, no, we got to be careful. So the openings cannot be big enough for a child's finger to get inside and get stuck in. What that does though, unfortunately, is it causes larger debris like leaves to not be able to go through there. So then you're stuck with, if you're fortunate to have the leaf vac option on your pop-up system, the leaves going into that and hopefully get caught or going into the skimmer. But you'll notice that's that side of the pool where that stuff always ends up gathering and there it sits. Just wanted to show you that. This is one of the cons of pop-up systems. Hey, I wanted to deviate a little bit from my discussion on uh, pop-up systems and show you this. This is called a diverter, or I mean, there's probably other names for it, but that's what we have called it. It's basically, it goes inside the skimmer. And if you notice the holes down there, the, the hole on this side, what I'm pointing at on this side of the, of the, of the skimmer sump, that's going directly to the, the, the filter and the pump. Okay, the other hole goes down to the floor drain, all right? And theoretically, what happens with this is as long as there's nothing down there stopping, restricting the flow from the skimmer, then water is going to pull directly from this skimmer here, right? Because water seeks the path of least resistance. But in order to activate that hole on this side, which is the floor drain, they have these, and you can adjust this little opening so you can get more or less suction. But the theory is that when this is down in here and it sets in the bottom, let me get my arm all wet doing this, okay? It creates, it allows some suction to still happen for the skimmer, but it diverts some of the suction so that you get some pull from the floor drain. Now, theoretically, they work pretty well, but I've not known them to work that great. The other thing that I've just learned from one of my subscribers, and thank you for posting it, um, is that that little float, if the water level in the skimmer or in the pool drops below the opening of the skimmer, that particular float is supposed to drop and create um, and stop the suction to going to this skimmer so your filter won't suck air or their system won't suck air it'll pull from the floor drain um, what i've found even if that is true what i have found that that little float a lot of times that float um, doesn't float very well you know, for whatever reason, it gets old, it cracks, and it just sticks down there, and then your skimmer doesn't work very well. So anyway, um, this pool does have it. I haven't taken it out in a lot of my pools. I have, but um, if the float or if that diverter actually is to prevent a pool from uh, sucking air, that's a good thing. Most of my pools, in fact, all of my pools that I service have auto fillers, so that's usually not an issue, but it is something to consider. All right, this is a third example of a pool with a pop-up system. And this is a brand new client. In fact, this is my, except for my initial consultation, in which this pool actually had some algae growing in it, which I threw some trichlor shock in, a little phosphate remover, and it's all cleared up. This system doesn't seem to create a lot of pressure. You notice the movement is very limited in these heads, okay? And then you can also, well, you can't anymore, but there's a lot of leaves in there, all right? So for some reason, this is having a bit of a tough time sucking the leaves out. Now, I'm actually exploring this as we go. So this lid, I'm guessing that this is for the autofill valve. It is, okay, so that's the autofill valve. And that is a side feed autofill valve. And I'm gonna go into how to replace one of those in a future episode. Um, 
Also, you know, this is client. She dropped a tablet in her pool just to get some chlorine in there. And this has a deck chlor actually. And that was a big mistake. I'm gonna have to get that out of there. If you notice the, the circle around it, that brown circle, that's that chlorine tablet is starting to cause some damage to that plaster. And that's why you never wanna drop a chlorine tablet straight onto your, the bottom of your pool or plaster pool or pebble tech, okay? Especially when it either, you either have a floating chlorinator or this one has a deck chlor, which is this, and the tablets go in there. And you notice that water flow right there in that little pipe? Okay, water's going in there, so that's some of the return water going in there. So that has to be working to get that to keep working. And then the tablets erode inside there, and then the concentrated mix of the chlorine filters into the pool. But it's sharing the return power with the pop-ups. Now again, these pop-ups don't seem to be working as well as they could. If you notice, there's a quite a bit of dirt on this step, and there's not a lot of water movement. So. There can be a couple reasons for that. This is one of the, I'm gonna shut this off so you can. Okay, so as I shut it off, okay. So this particular one, so in the first example, remember that leaf canister was in the ground. This one happens to be here. So that's a good idea, right? So there's a leaf vac, it even says leaf vac, right? And this is the suction for it. And I tend to tell people, leave that completely open. So you've got full suction. So this one has suction from the skimmer, the main drain, and it all, and then it comes through the leaf vac. So anything that gets through there goes through the leaf vac before it gets to the main pump basket. So most of the time, this is the only thing you need to empty, but I check them both. So this is the return side right here, all right? Now remember what I said, that first pool and the second pool that I showed you, um, actually take that back, the first pool I showed you had a dedicated pump motor for the return, so it created a lot of pressure, okay? And the second one did pretty good too, but he doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. This one, okay, there's your return pipe, and it's sharing with the cleaning system, okay? And a quick skim, a quick skim is a feature in the, in the, um, in the skimmer that supposedly creates additional suction. Um, I think it's kind of a, a waste, but it was out there for a while. There's an aerator, and then there's the deck chlor, okay? So you have the deck chlor, that's the chlorinator that I showed you. An aerator, we'll talk about those later, but basically it blows water when the filter's running. And if it's running in the evening, theoretically it cools that water so it keeps the temperature from going up too high in your pool water. Um, they do work, um, but we'll, we'll talk more about that. The quick skim I told you about. So it's sharing with all that. And you notice most of the valves are shut completely, okay? So that's telling me that there should be enough pressure going to that cleaning system. So my guess is, this is a cartridge filter, Okay, my guess is that the cartridges probably need to be clean. I'm going to fire this up and see what the pressure goes up to. I don't know if you can see that. There's the green line. That's good. That's red. So this one looks, if this is accurate, like the pressure should be okay. So for whatever reason, these pop-up heads are not getting, in my opinion, enough pressure. Okay, you can see the water moving a little bit. It's not too bad, right? And you see the water moving on those steps. So it's not too bad. But you'll notice there's some dirt in different areas on the steps, and that's because that head's probably not ratcheting around when it goes down. Now, there's a little bit of algae right there on the wall. We'll take care of that as I service this pool. But I just wanted to show you an example of an older pop-up system and the pop-ups. Now, as far as the pop-up heads, you'll notice there's one of the heads right there, okay? There is a tool for each different manufacturer's pop-up head, and that one you'll notice, let me try and look at it, has three little holes around the inner circumference, right? And there's a tool that you have to have that can help you dislodge those, basically twist them and pop them out, and then you can replace the heads, all right? And I'll go into replacing pop-up heads in another episode. Uh, and it's about the only amount of work that I really do on pop-up heads. Uh, I don't deal with replacing the actuators. Now, this one, you'll notice the actuator is way over here, okay? And it's kind of cool because you can see that paddle spinning in there, right? So water's going in from this pipe. It's hitting from this side. It's going in the side of this thing here, and that's spinning that paddle wheel. And that paddle wheel is turning the gears, and all the pipes 
are underground for the different segments of the pop-ups. And that's how that works. And this little tab right here, if you lift that, that will stop the gears from turning. But I want to keep that turning, okay? And then again, this is how you open it, but you want to make sure if you ever open that, you do it without the motor running so that there's no pressure and you don't want to have any chance of the motor actually turning on because you'll get water spraying in there, okay? So this is an example of probably an older version of a pop-up system that I don't particularly care for. All right, in this section, I'm gonna to talk to you about my opinion or from my experience, the pros and the cons to having an in-floor or pop-up cleaning system in your pool. Uh, again, and I understand that if you already have one installed and it's already in the pool, there's not a whole lot to be done about it. But if you're considering putting a pool in, um, and when I give you my opinion on this, it'll hopefully give you uh, some more information to think about before you make the choice to or not to put a pop-up system in your pool. So honestly, in my opinion, based on my experience, um, and some of you guys may disagree with this, which is totally okay, but based on my opinion, or based on my experience, I think the only pro to the pop-up system is that it's more aesthetically pleasing. You don't have a big vacuum in the bottom of your pool and a hose you know, line running through your pool all the time. So it makes it easier if you're swimming, you don't have to take it out, you don't have to remember to put it back in because a lot of times if your vacuum's out and the dedicated vacuum line is um, closed, you're gonna end up uh, restricting the flow of your water. Uh, some people take it out of their pool, leave it connected, the vacuum, and they leave it uh, out of the water, and then the pump fires up overnight, and then you're kind of in bad shape because you're gonna pull air into your system and probably do, possibly do some damage to your equipment. So aesthetically, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Um, that really is about the only good thing I can see about pop-up systems. Um, so here's some of the cons. The big one, I don't think they're as efficient. I mean, think about it this way. And again, I'm reaching here, but stay with me. Imagine you going into your house, you turn your air conditioner on, if you have a central air conditioning or a central heater, and you take a blower, right? And you blow the dust off of all your stuff and blow all whatever's on the ground up into the air and hope that the returns suck that into the filter and clean it out. That's kind of what you're doing with a pool uh, or with pop-ups. You're basically suspending the dirt and the particles with a pop-up system in the water, which I know it'll stay suspended longer. And then the filter through the suction side of the filter is to pull out anything dirt-wise, debris-wise, and stuff like that. Now, that's all fine and dandy. Here's one of the problems when it comes to leaves, and they have those leaf vacs you saw in some of my, some of my pools. The problem with some of those is that the, the, a lot of times it goes through the floor drain cover and it's sucked through the floor drain cover or there's some kind of grating. Now, before those gratings used to be fairly large, which would allow a leaf to go in or bigger, bigger, bigger particles. The problem is um, there have been a lot of uh, issues with safety and I believe OSHA, at least in Arizona, said that you have to, you cannot have the opening of the holes in the floor drain or any of the drain covers in, in a pool, um, any bigger, uh, big enough for a small child's finger to get caught in. And obviously the ramifications of that is child goes, swims down the bottom of the pool, gets their finger stuck in, the, in a floor drain cover and they can't get out. And obviously that's, that can lead to a tragedy. So um, what happened then was, now that you have these smaller floor drain covers with the smaller openings, leaves don't get through. So you got leaves in the bottom of the pool. So for dirt, okay, they work okay. But honestly, a vacuum is so much more efficient because it actually sucks. Like I said, it's actually sucking the dirt directly into the filter where it's cleaned and it's brought back into the pool clean. The other thing is it, it pretty much sucks in debris. It'll handle leaves and things like that. Obviously rocks, you know, cans, things like that, it's not gonna work. But um, it's just a vacuum is more efficient than a, a blower style product. Um, the other thing is the lifetime warranty. Um, it's been my experience, and it may be different in different parts of the country, but in Arizona, um, if, you, they, if you're the original owner, and that's the key, if you're the original owner of the pool, then those pop-up heads are supposed, and the whole system, 
the pop-up system, including the actuator and the gears and all that stuff, is guaranteed for life, providing you are the owner of that pool and the original owner of that pool. If you sell that house and then somebody else buys the house, obviously, and they want the warranty, it doesn't apply. Now, you could check home warranties. Some of them cover small parts of that, but you have to look into that before you guarantee it. The other thing about lifetime guarantees that I don't really care for is I have two clients right now that the pool company that built their pool is no longer doing business in Arizona. So guess what? That lifetime warranty, they're actually having to go through the, the corporation of the company. They're, I mean, this company still does business in other states, but they're saying, well, we don't operate in Arizona anymore, so the warranty is invalid. And if you look at the fine print, you're not covered anymore. So um, lifetime warranty really doesn't mean a lot. I, I always kind of look at lifetime warranties as, you know, there's, there's limits to those anyway. So um, I also know that the cost to repair those. My cost for, for a pop-up head, a typical pop-up head is anywhere between 40 and $60 depending on the kind of head that it is. So if you imagine you've got 13 to 18 heads in a pool and they start breaking down, and they do break, because of the corrosion and plastic, it just gets old and it cracks and it breaks and it stops functioning. You're looking at a lot of money to replace those. That's just the cost. It's not the installation. Installation's a pain in the butt too. And that doesn't, uh, and it also can be more expensive if the hole that it locks into, that the pop-up head locks into, if that becomes damaged, then you gotta get in there and, and replace that. And that can become a real beast because if you don't have scuba tanks, you gotta wait till you can drain the pool and take it all apart. So it's a bit of a beast. So that's another reason that I think is a con when it comes to that. The other thing is, um, again, and I've alluded to this before in other parts of the video, um, if you don't, a lot, of, a lot of the pools that I experienced that had pop-ups, whoever built them, um, Put too, usually put too many heads per section on the pop-ups, so there was never enough pressure to drive the pop-ups. And um, so that creates a real problem, right? Um, and they also don't work very well if you have a lot of dust or a lot of dirt. So again, uh, I'm not um, a big fan of the pop-up system. So those are the cons about a pop-up system. Oh, also again, cost of repair. And again, all those gears, it's kind of one of the reasons I don't like the Hayward Navigators, and I talked to you about that at vacuums, or any um, incarnations of the Navigator, because there's so many gears. And again, you have plastic and metal in a corrosive environment, chlorine, acid, in a pool, okay, and water. And so it's just, it, it is a formula for things to break down and wear out. So. Um, for those reasons, I, I see a lot of cons in that. Lastly, and this can happen with a vacuum too, but I see it happen less. Um, there can be a lot of dead spots. When those heads stop turning as they get worn and they're not replaced, and a lot of people, they just never get around to it, um, you're gonna get dead spots where it doesn't blow that area. And I showed you on that second example of one of my pools that that one area, as hard as it blows, that debris always ends up right in that little side pocket and it never goes anywhere so I have to net it out every time. With a vacuum, providing you've got the vacuum set up right and you have your, um, your return ports pointed the direction the manufacturers recommend, most of them recommend you point them down, right? Um, your vacuum is probably gonna hit everything. And again, it can, it can miss certain spots, um, but it's a lot less, I think, than what I've experienced with pop-up systems. All right, so I've talked to you about pop-up systems, kind of how they work. I've shown you three examples of pop-up systems. Two actually do pretty well. The third one, it's iffy. The jury's still out because I've just started servicing that pool. Um, then I've also gone over the pros and cons of the pop-up systems. And in future episodes, I'm going to teach you... Um, I'm not gonna get into a lot of things about uh, replacing the gears in the actuator because it differs, and I've done it a couple times, but I don't do it. I refer people to other people to do that, so I, I won't comment on that. But I will show you how to change a head on a pop-up you know, pop system, and um, we'll do that in a future episode. And then I will also show you in a future episode how to convert your pop-up pool to a suction vacuum. Um, so. What is my opinion? If you haven't guessed it already, in my opinion, based on my experience, and again, I respect those of you who disagree with me, but I am not a fan of pop-up cleaning systems. I'm just not. My experience 
and just looking at them, I don't think they're efficient enough for the money and the amount of work it takes to have to maintain them. It's just not, I'm just not a fan of them. So my suggestion is, and I've done this with numerous uh, clients' pools and they are extremely happy. There's not one who's not been happy about this. I've helped them convert or I've converted their pool into a vacuum system as opposed to a, uh, you know, we've just overrode the pop-up system and they are delighted. And again, you still have to deal with the vacuum in the pool, but they're delighted with it. I've had nobody complain about it yet. So that's my opinion. Not a fan of a pop-up system. My suggestion or recommendation would be to convert your pop-up system pool into a vacuum pool, a stay in the pool vacuum system, and I think you'll be quite happy. That again is my opinion. So that's it my friends. I know this has been a rather lengthy video. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover in this and I hope I covered enough to give you enough information that you can make an informed decision about pop-up systems or if you're building a pool, especially uh, what you choose. Um, I hope it made sense. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can post them in the comment section below this video, or you can email me directly and I'll put my email address again across the bottom screen. It's kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. I want to remind you all again, to please like and subscribe to this channel. And if you have any friends that have pools that are looking to save a few bucks by servicing their pool themselves, even the basics, please share this channel with them and ask them to subscribe as well. I really thank you again for watching. And as always, and again, we're heating up out here in Arizona. Have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids around water. And I will see you next time.